Hey chess fans, George's Chess Channel here, back again with another tournament recap, and so I'm just going to jump right into it. So the first game is between me as white and another chess player, around uh, 1600 as black. So I went e4, d6, d4, knight f6, knight knight c3, knight bd7, f4, g6. This is the perk, and it's a idea in which you attack the center later in return for basically having less develop, for having more development. So I go knight f3, developing, and now... Here I, he goes bishop g7, I go e5, uh, threatening his knight and breaking in the center because I thought that I'll have a lot more space. He takes, I take, and here he goes knight g4, and here I'm already like uh, basically winning. And so I went h3, he went back, and I sort of fumbled my advantage here by playing some natural moves. And at this point I'm still winning, but after bishop h4 I'm no longer winning. And here white is better because of his positional edge. This bishop is not allowing this rook to come to the d-file. The knight can come to b5 in the future. There's ideas here with maybe this. The knight can come into this square. There's lots of ideas for white here. So I go knight b5, bishop d7. A great move. I miss this move and I just go back because what he's going to do is he's going to take here and I really don't see what I'm supposed to do. The engine likes this and then a line like this which I didn't see and white is uh, down a exchange but up a lot of pawns so here uh, white would be better but instead I play knight c3 my opponent attacked my bishop I went back here he went for the c4 square here he should have gone here immediately but he didn't bishop c6 and I went rook d4 gu uh, guarding the square rook f8 and I doubled and knight g4 here I sacrificed the exchange because I thought that the knight coming to e4 was more important and my opponent took the exchange and then blundered. Here I should go knight f6. And apparently there's some sort of f5 move that is uh, winning. Knight f6, king g8, and f5 is winning. Because he can't take here due to this. So I said I went h4 looking for h5. He went c5. I went rook d1. Rook c8. And I forked his rook so he didn't see it. Rook cd8. And here I got into a losing position. White is simply worse in this endgame. But I managed to swindle my way out of it. And yeah, here he took, which is a draw. But then he made this unfortunate blunder, and I was able to win the king and pawn endgame by distracting him with the outside pawn. So now I'm going to go into the second game between me as black and around a 1950 as white. So my opponent started off with b4, e5, bishop b2, bishop xb4, bishop xc5, and this is called the Polish variation. And I just went for what most grandmasters recommend, which is to simply do this. And black is already slightly better after e4, c5, and d5. This position already is a lot better for black. Black has a lot of control of the center. He has his good pieces and he's castled. So I was just following what I knew. And I was already out of theory by first few moves. But here you just have to continue developing and continue developing. And I just got all my pieces active. And white did a similar thing, except his pieces are a little bit more passive. He goes c3, not really sure what this is doing. I go h6, not sure what this is doing. And then c4 breaking in the center. And I take here. And here I basically equalize the position because I wasn't sure what to do. And then here I'm completely winning. If I play knight d4 and then I have positional pressure and my opponent can't really do much. But instead I play rook d3 and after takes, 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 takes. Uh, this is basically a draw. And there's not much I could do. And then I blundered here. And then here I blundered. And here white, it's a draw again. And this is still a draw. But unfortunately, I ran out of time here, so I lost the game. So the third game is between uh, 1840 and uh, 1970, the same 1970 that beat me. So d4, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, bishop b7, and cx d4, the exchange variation of the queen's gambit. And this is a, a cool way to play the queen's gambit. It honestly just offers white a small advantage and lots of players like this. Knight xd4 is usually a mistake because usually in this type of position, black wants to attack on the queen side with stuff like this, maybe get the knight to g6. So he really shouldn't be trading pieces. But if you simply want to draw, this is the way to go. Also here, instead, uh, bishop d2 or e3 should be played. Not as adventurous as bishop f4. And so they just develop their pieces. White goes for the minority attack to try to get a weakness. He gets a weakness. And then here he sacks a piece for really not a lot of reason here. White is significantly better. He has a weakness here. He has a weakness here. So he doesn't really need to do anything here. But he gets a good position out of it. And uh, black gets into some trouble. And then he manages to do a nice tactic of rook takes d7. And then win the other rook in the corner. But he blunders a draw. 
And here they agree to a draw, but the position could still be played for a win with like rook here, maybe try to get the rook over here, and then your king can come in. But it's probably objectively a draw. The only thing black has to do is check the king from behind. The, chink, the, the king can never really come here because of the fact that we're going to take here. So now I'm going to go into the fourth game. It was again by uh, the 1900 as white and a 2000 as black, b4, e6. And so here, uh, here uh, uh, black went for a more quiet approach instead of playing e5, which is completely fine. And he got a good position because of it. Instead of the f5, which is pretty weakening, knight f6 here, knight f6, a3, bishop b7 seems to be better for black already. But I guess he went for this. And a5 also is slightly confusing of a move, maybe preferred to see like bishop b7 or d6, but it's also a good move. And black develops his pieces kind of strangely, wastes a move with bishop d6, wastes d7, gets his knight into there. And here black is doing pretty well, or black is doing pretty badly because of the fact that he's going to get busted on the queen side. And he, uh, white just gets his regular Dutch play, except way quicker. And this trade of queens was a big mistake because now there's uh, three pawns in the center, or on the side that are going to become a queen. And we see this crazy pawn structure here, which really doesn't make a lot of sense. And you don't really see this ever in games. E5, knight back. And white is just completely winning here because uh, black can't stop the pawns. And black's pawns can't really move. And so, yeah, we continue the game. And here, uh, black resigned because there's not really much he can do. And so the final game was between a 1700 as white and a 1900 as black. And so we have e4. We have another perk. This time, white decides to go for a more modern uh, setup. Or a more classical setup, sorry. And he castles queenside. And here he goes for the attack. Here... Instead of taking with the pawn, knight takes is probably better. Actually, no, because if takes, takes, and then g5 here, wins. So you have to take with the pawn. Here, you could technically go for g5, but it's kind of risky. Bishop g5 is also a good move. And here, he plays a nice tactic. Rook takes d7. Notice the knight can't take because the queen hangs. And if the queen takes, which happens in the game, uh, white gets two pieces for the exchange. And here, black goes rook e6, completely blundering this. And here, white converts nicely and wins a nice game from the attack. There were some problems here with uh, winning the pawns, but white in the end managed to play a good game and win because of it. And here black resigned. So that's the end of today's video guys. If you liked the video, please remember to leave a like and subscribe and comment uh, your favorite chess opening if you want to comment something.